Hey there, I'm Shy Fox. I'm a self-taught full-time freelance artist and uh, today we're going to learn how I draw text for my emotes. I'm going to show you my whole process. I've uh, previously done a video on how I do emotes fully. So if you want to see my whole emote process, including like canvas size and all those little details, how to make it look good small, I've already made that video. Uh, this video is just on text. I figured we needed a video specifically for how to do the words for emotes because those are so important they need to be readable when small and I see a lot of emotes out there that the text isn't readable so that is really you know not only to look good but also be readable that's what we're gonna talk about today now I've been making uh, emote commissions since 2016 uh, here are some of my emotes now this one's actually um, a pre-made pack that I'm gonna sell on Etsy so it's kind of just an option for people who maybe don't want to hire uh, a uh, artist you know it's it's a sort of that in-between option so it's cheaper to just like use the whole set and you know for twitch or discord but uh, we need to make the emote that's going to go in that top right spot which is going to be that hype emote i'll put more information at the end of the video about this pack and also link in the description to it if this is of interest to you but let's get on with drawing our hype emote I'm a Twitch streamer as well, so you can always check me out, ask me questions when I'm live, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more emote videos such as this one. So this is sort of the base design that I've come up with. I already sketched this out, and I've got the text at the bottom, Pikachu doing the hype action. And the trick with a lot of uh, these emotes is, you know, being readable. That's obviously a really important thing. And uh, when you've got an image and text, those are, you know, some of the most difficult emotes to make look good because the image needs to be readable and same with the, the text itself. And when you have text, that gives you less room to draw the image. So it's a balance and uh, we need to try and plan this out so that it's going to look good. And one of the tricks to that is not too many letters. I find uh, keeping it to less than six across. So hype is four letters across. That reads well typically. But uh, if you're getting past six letters, then that's that's tricky. The more experience you get though with making emotes with text, you, you can definitely do longer words, but the bigger the word, the more difficult it is to get that readable. It will be a bit of a trial and error once you get to a certain stage to edit your text and uh, make it readable. When, when you're kind of like done, you just test and that's something I'll walk you through how I check and do those tests too. And, the steps for that. Here's a really important thing I'm just gonna note. I still see emotes of this type and I still get people asking me for emotes of this type. You cannot have emotes that are one letter. For example, an F. Uh, people like to make F emotes for fail. Twitch doesn't accept those. They will deny uploading that. So keep that in mind. So how I start this off is I make a text layer, a uh, type of layer that allows text using the text tool and I like to actually draw my um, draw my letters. You could alternatively actually use text, and uh, I did this on my iPad, so it's a different font. But for example, whatever font you want, that's probably not a good one. But for the example, we'll just kind of do this and give it a border. I would say would be a good idea. So we're we're gonna kind of do that too. So you can see that you can do that in the program. This is a bad combo, two dark colors next to each other, not ideal. We want we want there to be contrast. Like this would not be readable when small. That looks like crap. So that's what you don't wanna do, but in terms of like a way you can do text for your emotes, you can do it with the text tool and then you can like add shines and things afterwards if you wanted to, but I'm literally gonna draw mine. It's how I like to do it, so. What I do after I create my base text, I'll pick like a font, stretch it to the space how I want to, and then I'll see the opacity slider here. I'll just turn it down because I'm literally gonna sketch over top of that. Uh, I'll show you. This gives me the freedom to kind of like design my uh, bubble letters. I like to do bubble letters so you can see I'm kind of doing that here. I like to make them go a little wider at the, at the I guess points of the letter, does that make sense? The tips of each part of the letter, does that make sense? And you don't have to do it that way. You could literally trace the font exactly if you wanted to, but this is what I do. It's kind of a guideline. And speaking of tracing, a couple things. Uh, never trace emotes, never trace other people's emotes. I think it's worth noting. But uh, the one place I give exception to is fonts. I don't really see a problem with that. Trace fonts all day, that's fine. So essentially, this is what we've got at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and 
uh, collar sketch done and line do the line work for our emote. I'm not going to include that in the video. You can see my other tutorial for you know that whole process if you want. That's why I made that video. This is just on text, so we're just going to get through this part. I'm going to create the emote and then we'll talk about the text part of it only. So I have lined Pikachu and I'm going to line the text. I tend to do the text in a thicker line uh, than the actual emote, so I'm going to do it like that here, nice and thick. We can turn off the sketch layer now that we've lined our text. And what I've done is I put all my line work layers in one folder. So we've got Pikachu, I like to do the eyes separate, uh, the height text, and I'm going to click on the lighthouse. That's going to set it as a reference layer, makes for easy fill bucket coloring. So with that said, I'm going to start coloring. I'm going to color the Pikachu ultra fast, and I'm going to make sure I use the same colors as as I used on these Pikachus. Pikachu is now colored, so we're gonna go ahead and color the font or the text. So I'm gonna make a new folder and get a color going. I'm gonna try orange to start with. And one thing I like to do is kind of add gradients to it. So a brighter orange on the top, and I might even try into a reddish orange or red on the bottom, kind of like that. And then I'm gonna make a new layer for some highlights. I just use a brush tool and I'll often try a setting like add glow. You could literally just pick white and it'll kind of do the same thing. So. I usually pick a side where I want the highlights to be coming from, so I'm picking the left, and I kind of almost, almost randomly put them in, so you can kind of make that up how you want that to go. So I'm gonna do that a bit differently. Most of my highlights on the left side. And I'm also gonna do the shadows so I like to use multiply for that and I turn down the opacity so the glow that one looks okay I'm gonna leave it but probably turn down our multiply opacity we'll see how it looks I might not need to and I picked a orangey darker orangey red to kind of let myself put that in uh, so these shadows are being placed on the opposite side of the highlight side so the highlights we put in on the left side of each letter and the shadows are going in sort of on that right side and bottom so i'm liking how that's looking uh, another step there's two more sort of simple steps that i feel like are kind of a, a must do here I'm gonna make two copies of the hype text. One of them's gonna go underneath, so I'm dragging that down to go underneath. And this one, I'm gonna change its color. So because it's a vector layer, I'm gonna go and easily change the color of it. Some programs have vector, some don't. I, I chose to do vector layer, and this is why uh, I think it's really important to use vector layers when you're making emotes. I don't think I mentioned it earlier when I was doing the line work, but let me mention it now. It's really important to use vector layers because it gives you the option to change the thickness of your font. Uh, and that comes into play really important when you're making those tweaks. So anyway, vector is that little button that looks like this, the one with the cube, new vector. So that gives you the option to use, uh, you know, the object tool to adjust. And so I'm going to, I'm going to make the outline uh, on top here, that color, <laughs> dark red, I guess, a red and our hype text behind. I like the black outline for my emotes in general. So this is where I'm going to go ahead and add that in behind. Now, the way I've done this, I'm looking at it and I'm deciding that I think it would be super useful to scale it down. So this is, again, part of the tweaking process. I'm gonna scale this so that the black border all fits. 
I could have planned this in advance, but this is just kind of, I just tweak as I go, make it make the most of my space. So I like that. So literally this is the basics of what I do with my emotes. Um, you don't have to have the, the, the red layer basically. You could just outline it in black and that would be okay because there would still be enough contrast. But I'm really liking having an outline, almost like the double outline. So let's see how it looks small. And I'm loving that. I think that looks great. I don't know if you guys can see this on your screen because it looks ultra tiny for me. It probably looks ultra tiny, tiny, tiny for you. But I like it at that 28 by 28 size. I'm gonna call this emote done. And we're gonna put it in the display, yes. Ta-da! So again, some key points with text with your emotes is pick a font that's readable. So thicker letters like bubble letters are easier to read and uh, not too many letters across. Other key is contrast in your outline versus what's inside the letter. So we got black, really strong black outline, and then inside is a lot of this brighter orangey red. Uh, so that is gonna really make it pop and stand out so that we can very much see it at that tiny size. We're gonna test out this image on our display to see how it looks. I'm gonna give you guys the option to use this. Uh, in the description, there'll be a link so you can save this image. So I'm gonna paste my emote in. So to test this out, I've put our emote against each of the colors of this background, which is like a, like a real Twitch chat. So this image you can download. I will put that in the description of this video and you can download it. So what you might run into is you shrink it down and you're like, oh, I can't read it. You need to do some problem solving. You need to figure out what is causing it not to be readable. Is it the lack of contrast? Is it the colors against the, the image? Is the word too small? Can you make it bigger? And you'll just have to tweak as you go. So again, this is why vector becomes really useful because then you can adjust, tweak, whatever you need to do with those lines. Remember that emotes take practice. My emotes back when I started were not good. They weren't. But uh, if you keep practicing, you'll get better at them. If you have any questions about emote creation, you can comment, you can come visit me on my stream and I'll be making more emote videos like this one. So again, if you're interested in an emote pack, you decide, ah, oh, drawing emotes is just too hard. Or you're just like, I would really love to just fill slots maybe until you're happy with your own emotes, then these will be for sale for 12 US dollars on Etsy for now. And there will be more sets like this one that I've made for you guys. So link in the description to that. You can also check out my other emote videos that I've got on my channel. With all that said, I hope you guys like my Pikachu emote set. I hope you found this video it was helpful for you to learn more about emote creation and uh, best of luck creating your emotes, you guys. I love when you show them to me, which if you wanna come by in the Discord, drop them in the Discord channel with the art sharing channel. It's really cool when I see what you guys have been creating. And uh, I'm thinking about, maybe let me know if you think this is a good idea, a doing some art well some emote art critique videos where i critique your guys's emotes maybe that's something we can do in the future so that we can learn from mistakes and improve our emotes so if that is something you think would be cool to see then let me know i don't know it's just an idea right now okay you guys have a great freaking day and i'll see you in another video maybe on twitch okay bye guys